Hello and welcome to Live with Holly. It is November and today we are talking about specifically three exercises that you can use to improve your strength and that are really important for optimal body mechanics and injury prevention. So I have probably about 20 favorite exercises and every single one of the 20 is my favorite. There are certain very foundational moves that you can do in the gym or at home that greatly reduce your risk of injury and also are really important for just proper mechanics. So if you got my free email update this week, it went out yesterday, I started the email with the sentence that says, kinesiology is the study of human movement. And last night I was at an event and there were two people there that were on, that are on my email list. And one of them came up to me at the end of the night and she goes, oh my God, earlier today, a girlfriend was telling me how she needed a kinesiologist and I didn't realize you were a kinesiologist. And the other person that was there is someone that knows me really well and she said you're a kinesiologist and I was like um yeah how did you not know that she knows me very very well and the funny thing is a lot of people think of me as a as a trainer or an author or a fitness expert or a woman's strength coach but the truth is my history really is in kinesiology which is the study of human movement as well as exercise physiology which is different than normal human biology because how your body works during episodes of exercise is actually very different than it, than it works right now while you're sitting there at rest. Exercise physiology is completely different than basic physiology when you're hanging out or sleeping or eating or watching a movie. And so what I talked about in yesterday's email update was specifically this concept of human movement. And therefore, when we whittle it down and we look at the fitness industry and all these different cool and innovative exercises that you could be doing, and certainly you can do, it's critical that you have a handful of exercises that are covering your basis. They're covering the foundation. You need to have certain moves to make sure that you really are keeping your body working and moving optimally. And so in my field, we really look at these certain movement patterns that the human body makes. And we know that in order to really make sure you're functioning optimally, you have to be strengthening the movement pattern that governs you sitting up and standing up and sitting down, right? Because wouldn't you agree that's something that you do every day, some version of standing up and sitting down. It might be sitting down to go to bed and it might be standing up out of bed. It might be sitting down to get into your car and it might be climbing a flight of stairs, which is very similar to sitting down and standing up. And so there are certain movement patterns that you perform every single day and those movement patterns that you perform are governed by specific muscles and if you're not strengthening those muscles those muscles are getting weak that's just the way that it goes as we age and therefore it's just so critical that you're making sure you strengthen and improve certain movement patterns every single week and so that is what we're talking about today i picked three exercises to highlight. And while these aren't the only three, these are three super valuable exercises that you should include into your weekly strength repertoire. My French has come back from high school, repertoire. But you want to include these into your weekly strength training routine. These are three exercises. If you're doing nothing and you're not doing any strength training at all, these are three exercises, boom, you're done. If you are strength training, these are three that you wanna add into the mix of what you're already doing. And they're super, super beneficial. So that's what we're talking about today. But first, you want to make sure you check out today's blog because I take it a step further, and if you go visit today's blog, I'm gonna add two more exercises to the mix so that if you want, a, a comprehensive 
minimal cover your basis strength workout. These five exercises in total are a great place to start. So within my community, I've got two different kinds of viewers. I've got some people that are just starting their strength training journey, and then I've got a lot of you guys that have been with me for a while who um, are becoming more advanced. And so nonetheless, these five exercises are super helpful that you can turn into a standalone strength program if you want, or you can just filter them in throughout your week. So make sure you check out the blog today, hollyperkins.com forward slash blog. And the, um, the blog title is three exercises for strength and prevention, injury prevention. So if you're with me on Instagram, all you gotta do is click the link in my bio and then there'll be a tab that says blog. And on Facebook, just look up above and in this video feeds description, there's gonna be a direct link to the blog in just a few minutes when Cindy returns behind the camera. Um, so hi, how are you guys today? Who is with me? We have over here on Instagram, we have Find Peace With Food, hi. Healthy Geekster, Billy Lawyer's here, Tracy Evelyn, Anita hi. Webb. Hi! Polina. Anita, we were just talking about your deadlifts. We were. Polina8046 is here, Natalie MMN. Hi! Iron Femme Fitness joined mm. us. Who else? Janelle, Janelle Friedman. Mm. Tracy says hi. Hi guys. hi guys. How is everybody? Uh, Janet. Janet. On Facebook. Of course, I love it. Nikki, Samantha. Where's everybody else? Anybody else on Facebook? Karen just uh, Karen. Karen. Running late. Hello, girlie. Woo! Hello, hello, hello. So good to have all of you guys here. Those of you guys that are watching quietly, or if you haven't been here before, or if you haven't said hello, I hope you'll chime in and say hi. Um, the reason why I do live with Holly every Wednesday at this time, right here, Facebook and Instagram. The reason why I do this is twofold. A, because I feel like after nearly 25 years in the fitness industry, I've got some info, I've got some insights, I know a couple things, and I think it'd be really nice to share it with the world. And so my first reason for being here is just to share some of the information that I have in the hopes of making your health and fitness better. I'm also here because I see this as a way for me to kind of provide um, service to you for free. And this is one of the ways that I like to give you access to me as a fitness expert, someone to bounce ideas off of and questions to. So if you have questions about today's topic, if you have comments, if you have questions that are not related to today's topic, please feel free to chime in and say hello. Um, it really is intended to be a two-way conversation and I would love to hear from you. So say hi, give me some thumbs up, tell me what's up. Share your thoughts, share your opinions, I wanna hear from you. Um, one of the coolest things that happens for me each week is I start to realize how this little virtual community that we have right here really becomes real relationships. And I received an email earlier today that I just kind of buzzed through quickly, but it was from someone who's new to the community and you know, she just was thanking me for the information. She says that she's already watched 40 episodes of Live with Holly. <laughs> which I absolutely love and has listened to some of my podcasts. And so the reason why I say this is many of you that are watching right now, that are with me right now, like Janet, like Anita, there's so many of you guys, Megan, so many of you guys like have really kind of become real relationships with me. And I'm so wanting to just grow this community even more. And so if you're watching this quietly or anonymously, um, or if you're here for the first time, I hope that you'll jump in. I hope you'll join us because we really do, I, I actually like to treat this and think of this as a two-way conversation. And I love it when you guys share your comments and thoughts and all of that. It just makes it a whole lot more fun. Oh, Chris yeah. and Marie said, hi, Holly. I've watched so many past episodes. So excited to finally join live. Oh, yay. I'm so glad. So again, I'm here. Yes, I'm going to be talking about a specific topic. But do know, guys, every Wednesday at 1 o'clock Pacific, 4 o'clock Eastern, I'm here. And just know that if you're struggling with some piece of your fitness or strength journey, 
bring it here on Wednesdays. I'm here for you. I'm here to support you. I consider this an opportunity for me to provide free insights the best that I can and to help you. And so just know that I'm a resource and that's one of the reasons why I'm here every Wednesday. So I wanted to share with you guys, um, there was some research that came out of Brigham, Brigham, I can't say that, say it, Brigham, Brigham, Brigham Young, Brigham, 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 Brigham Young <laughs> University. <laughs> say it to yourself, it's hard. Kia says it's just fine, Brigham. Is it Brigham or Brigham? No, it's Brigham. Brigham, Brigham. I don't know. Brigham. 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 It's, <laughs> it's like, I'm not even going to try. Brigham. Brigham Young University in 2015. And uh, it was an incredible piece of collective research that came out. And uh, basically what they're looking at is strength training and body composition in women over the age of 35, I think it was, right, Key? Was it yes. 35? Over it was 35 the age of 35 to 50 something, Yeah. right? So they consider that middle age. I don't consider 35 middle age. I guess 50 is middle age, 40 is technically, I guess, maybe middle age, but anyway. 35 to 50 something. And what I think is really interesting was one of the quotes that really jumped out at me was, a low level of fat-free mass is an indicator of poor health and greater risk of disease. Findings from several studies indicate an inverse association between fat-free mass and cardiovascular disease risk. So what this means is fat-free mass is muscle. It's just the way they, we scientifically refer to muscle, okay? Fat-free mass. And so what this is essentially saying, absolutely saying, not essentially, legitimately saying, is that a low level of muscle is an indicator of poor health and greater risk of disease. And we know from research like this that that disease that we're talking about is hypertension, stroke, heart disease, dyslipidemia, which basically means cholesterol levels being not where they're supposed to be. We also see greater risks of depression and age-related injuries. We see this from research and that is all linked to a higher correlation when you've got a low level of fat-free mass, which is muscle. Another way to say all of this is, if you are not strength training each year that you age, your risk of all diseases increases. And I say that not to be a fear monger because I get so frustrated at the news media when they glom on to these shocking and scary headlines to get your attention to fear monger. And that's not what this is about. This is actually a really objective conversation about the fact that says, once you get to about the age of 35, something called sarcopenia starts to become more, um, more of an issue. Approximately at about the age of 35, if you are not strength training every year after the age of 35, um, a condition which we call sarcopenia starts to become, starts to affect your life even more as you get older. What this is, sarcopenia is simply the loss of muscle mass due to the aging process. We know that simply by aging every year after the age of 35, even if you're exercising like me, we still lose muscle simply by the aging process. So if you are not fighting against that aging process, tooth and nail if you are a woman, your risk of all these diseases increases. And one of the best ways to combat that is to make sure that you are doing effective resistance training and strength training every single week. This is why this is my platform. This is why I talk so much about strength training because I see what a powerful correlation it is to your overall health across the board, no matter what your challenges are. It is a powerful, powerful tool. And so in today's blog, did you punch that in yet? Will you, if you won't, at the, up at the description, punch in today's blog or whenever you do that? I do that when I upload it. When you upload it. Mm -hmm. So if you're watching this in replay, you'll be able to get the link directly to today's blog at the top of this feed. And that is going to show you two exercises that you can add into your weekly mix that are going to help to reverse this this condition called sarcopenia or this fact of life called sarcopenia. 
So in today, yesterday's email update, I shared with you three exercises specifically to improve your strength and your biomechanical function. And those three exercises are, number one is goblet squat. So I really love goblet squats. Number one is goblet squats. I really love goblet squats, first and foremost, because you can do them at home or at the gym, and that's one of the reasons why I picked this exercise. Um, at the gym, a similar exercise would be a leg press, but the great thing about a goblet squat, beyond being able to do it at home or at the gym, is it really does strengthen the biomechanical movement pattern of standing up and sitting down. And that is something that we do all day long. And if you're not strengthening the muscles that govern that movement pattern, you're going to be losing muscle over time and you're going to have a reduction in how well you move. And this is where injuries start. This is also where aches and pains start. This is also the start of hormonal fluctuations and age-related weight gain because there's so much muscle mass from your waist down. And so I really love goblet squats as sort of a one-stop shop to address so many of the muscles that are in your lower body. So goblet squats are fantastic for improving the strength and the mechanics of your hamstrings, your glutes, your quadriceps, your upper back muscles, your core muscles, your hip stabilizers, everything from your core down, including your core. And when you're strengthening your core, you're creating a better foundation for the rest of your body in the upward direction. And so goblet squats are really, really incredible just to improve awesome mechanics. They're great for your glutes, great for your hamstrings, and it's a move that most people can do. So um, one of the beloved exercises in the fitness world is squats, right? Everybody talks about squats, 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 squats. I'm a huge fan of squats also. Uh, but the best way to do squats is in the gym with a barbell, a barbell back squat. And I know that not everybody is hitting the gym for their strength workouts. That's one of the reasons why I like goblet squat. The other reason is this, as you know, my conversation here really is geared specifically towards women. Everything I talk about in my community is very laser focused to the needs of women. And while I absolutely love back squats, barbell back squats, and any variation of squat, I think they're really critical. One challenge is that the way women are built, our hips are designed in such a way that we are a bit more limited in how we perform a traditional squat. And so at times I will use a goblet squat, which basically, and which by the way, is a squat. A goblet squat is a squat. It's just a variation of a traditional squat. But I really love goblet squats, especially for women. The reason is when you perform a goblet squat, your feet are a little bit wider, your toes are turned open a little bit more, and the weight load is in front of you, it's not behind you. And all of those little nuances add up to making a goblet squat a little bit easier to perform. And that's one of the reasons why I really, really, really love this exercise. So I've had clients in the past where I knew they needed to be doing barbell back squats. But because of their own structure, because of their own movement personality and the way they use their body, they just will never be able to perform a barbell back squat properly. And so there are some women, some of you out there, that no matter what you do, you might not ever get a perfect barbell back squat. Um, you could if you wanted to, but you might not. And therefore, there is a time and place to just scrap that exercise and do something that's a little bit more, um, what's the word? Um, um, just doable, right? Just like, it, it just is gonna work with your body a little bit better and in some ways it's easier. And that is what a goblet squat is for me. So if you're struggling with really getting your squats down right and you're frustrated and you feel like you don't ever make progress, a goblet squat might be a great little shift, 
so that you can start making some progress. Any questions or comments right now? Um, yeah, we have a few here on Instagram and um, Facebook. I'm going to read here from Michelle Walton. Hi. She said, um, um, I had done a long stretch of yoga last year, um, increased some strength, um, and slipped on some ice and was able to keep my legs from pulling apart, literally. I kept myself from uh, breaking something. So no doubt, decrease. Disease resistant and strength training powerful tool. Yes. Yeah. Um, and then that's huge. It's really true. I can't tell you. Just recently, I did something similar to that. Where oh, well, it's kind of a different situation. But um, oftentimes, when I trip, if I'm out walking my dog, or if I stumble, or if I roll over on an ankle, every now and then, I'm like, you know, I really see the power of strength training to prevent acute injuries. It's also really, really important to prevent chronic injuries, those kind of things that happen over time just because we are getting older and breaking down. Um, Jen G, hi ladies. Hi. In lots of pain today, but here, taking it all in. Why are you in pain? I know. We need to know. And then we have the la we have the lows. Uh, hi, hi, hi. Natalie Emmett, um, MMM said, uh, so I just started and I have a long way to go, but now dealing with um, heavy um, calcification in my knee. Cal calcification. Yeah. Calcification, sorry. In my knees and shoulder. What can help with that? Okay. Um, and then and she said, uh, and um, I love watching your Insta stories. Oh, yay! Um, and then um, Healthy Geekster said, when I have to, uh, when I have to pick up that fifty plus dumbbell, then then and then it also hits the upper body too. Uh huh, a hundred percent, especially on a goblet squat, squat for sure. If you're doing a fifty pound goblet squat, and then, that becomes an incredible I know I posture feel, building exercise. Oh yeah, I feel that big time. A lot, yeah. Sure. Awesome, I love that. Way to go, girl. Um, and Jen, she said chronic pain, eight years, eight years now. Got it, eight and today's just a rough yeah. day. Some days good, others not so much. Promise me that you're still continuing with your strength training journey because Jen has been here and chimed in several times, guys, so I know a little bit about her. Um, but we know that strength training is an incredible remedy for general pain conditions. So, um, and I think it was it Natalie that was asking about the calcification. So Natalie, stay with me because you're in my head right now. Um, my college dissertation upon graduation was all about, hilariously and appropriately so, was all about the impact of strength training in the elderly population. So very specifically, I was looking at research studies that showed how powerful strength training is for people who are severely debilitated. So we were looking at people the age of 65 and up. And what we found is that a well-constructed strength training program would improve the strength of some of these people by 400%. They were able to get four and 500% improvements in their strength from strength training. And along with that, we saw a reduction in all of those chronic pain situations and um, conditions, let's call it. And so Jen, I just hope that even when you're going through these bouts and these phases of enhanced pain, I hope so much that you're staying committed to your strength training protocol and program because over time there's going to be a positive correlation between every single one of those weeks that you stuck with it and over time a reduction in pain. So I hope that you are putting up the good fight and just doing your best to stay with it. Similarly to Natalie's question about um, increased calcification in her knees and her shoulders and how to work around it, there too it's very similar. So, um, well, you know, I would need to know a little bit more about the why you have the increased calcification because it could be several, there could be several reasons for it. Um, I'm gonna speak a bit generally and say, um, I talk about this quite a bit here on Live with Holly. So. We just had the, um, Halloween, right? So we just had Halloween, and you know how we see those like Halloween skeletons. Um, I think a lot of people think, and I know I thought for a long time, 
we envision the human body as a skeleton and it would make sense to think that is, it is those strong bones, it is those skeletal bones that are holding us upright in space, right? That It's like a building. You put a concrete foundation and you put stainless steel beams to hold a building up. And so we sort of envision the human body being held up in space by bones. That's actually not true. It's your soft tissue, your muscles are what are activating and holding your bones in place against gravity. And so whenever we are looking at joint or bone issues, we know that one of the things we have to look at is how are your muscles working together to put your bones where they're supposed to be. And so it's really important that when we look at joint problems or bone problems, strength training has to be in the mix to relieve any of the energetic drag that is happening on your skeleton because the muscles aren't doing their job. And so now when I hear increased calcification, right, it the first thing I think is there's something nutritionally, biochemistry, that caused an increased calcification. But if it's really more related to arthritis, okay, because of poor mechanics and because of your body structure over a period of time, even more so, it's so important for you to be strength training. And this is why I sound like a broken record, but effective, well-designed strength training is the foundation to the remedy of so many ailments that we women face, especially the aches and pains that we're talking about right now. And so Natalie, the first, the, one of the most important things is that you are finding some kind of a strength training protocol that works around any limitations that you might be having. And also, um, Jen, this applies to you too, yoga guys, um, was it Kayla that mentioned yoga and how she so she had been doing yoga for a while and she that slipped on Mich ice? That was Michelle. Michelle, oh that's right, Michelle was talking about doing yoga, slipping on ice. Yoga is also one of those forms of strengthening your body that can also be good for people who are dealing with pain conditions and or joint limitation. And so I'm a huge fan of yoga for a million reasons. I love yoga. I do feel that it definitely counts as part of your strength training, for sure. Yoga is a little bit limited though. And so I always want my clients, if they're doing yoga, I don't want that to be the primary uh, activity for strengthening. It's one activity, but you still gotta have these traditional exercises. And so what we're talking about today specifically are three traditional, simple strength exercises that you can do, some of them at the home, some of them at gym, and then they have to be done in the gym, but specific exercises that are really kind of like covering your bases for proper mechanics. So I just shared one of them with you, which was goblet squat, and I'm gonna go over two more in just a minute. Any questions or comments? No. no. Um, I just, um, Daniel Chris um, said, pretty much always learn something when you post. What's that mean? Pretty, <laughs> hmm? pretty much learn. All, pretty learn. much learn something every time you yeah. post. Okay, got it. I didn't hear the learn part. I was like, pretty much what? Huh? Pretty, basically learn something. When learn you post. something. Oh, I'm so happy. I'm so glad for that because that's what I'm here for, guys. Thank you for that comment. And truly, guys, share your comments because I love it. When you talk to me, it makes it a whole lot more fun. And I just like to know who I'm talking to. I wanna know what's up with you guys and I wanna know what pieces of, of this conversation really land for you because it gives me more to talk about in the hour. And so whatever you guys need help with, just let me know. So um, specifically in my free email update, every week goes out on Tuesdays. Every Tuesday, I'm gonna share with you a topic and in the email, I also give you exclusive content that I don't talk about here. So yesterday, I shared some really great exclusive content that I'm not gonna talk about here, but that is a um, encouragement 
for you to consider signing up for my free email updates if you haven't already. Please do because you get the best of the best of me. If you think this conversation is good, you're gonna wanna get my free email updates that happen on Tuesdays. And so all you have to do is click the link in my bio and Instagram. Then there'll be a little tab that says free emails. Plug in your email. Every Tuesday, you're gonna get a content-based email from me and you're gonna be getting all of my best insights and tips and tools in the exclusive content section about halfway down the page. And here on Facebook, all you have to do is click the button up above that says sign up. And all that does is that links you over to a page where you can enter your email um, address and your name and you'll get my free emails. And then be sure to check out today's blog because on the blog today, hollyperkins.com forward slash blog, I'm giving you two more exercises with video tutorials so you know how to perform these two exercises on the blog. And what you'll do is you'll add those two exercises to the three that I'm talking about today and you've got yourself a well-rounded little workout program. So if you are kind of new or you are getting your feet back under you in the gym, if you're learning the different strength training protocols and programs, you can take these five exercises and make it your workout program. All you have to do is take the three exercises that I'm gonna talk about today in this live video feed, two are coming. You add the two exercises that are on the blog, put them together into a workout and do that two times every week. You could actually even do that three times every week if you want, but start with two times per week, these five exercises, and you'll really have a great foundation underneath you. For those of you guys that are a little bit more advanced, um, take a look at what these five exercises are and just make sure that they are in the mix for you any given week. So these five exercises, I do all of them, right? One, two, three, four, five. I do all of them. In fact, today I did two of them. Yes, I did two of them today already, and then the other three I will do later in the week. So these are all super, super, super valuable exercises. So I've already talked one of the exercises is goblet squat. The second one is my beloved lat pull down. And so did you know, here's why. I really extra, extra, extra love lat pull down, and here is why. This movement pattern cannot legitimately or effectively be duplicated any place else except in the gym, okay? Now, you can duplicate it at home, it's just not as effective as getting into the gym and doing it on a cable pulley system. It's the best way to do it. It is especially for women. Um, there are ways to mimic it at home so it can still be effective and it's better than nothing. Um, but the best way to do it is on a lap pull down machine at the gym. And so that's one of the reasons why I am just such a proponent of encouraging you to work out in a gym. And I know some of you absolutely cannot. I know that it's, some of you live in rural areas and there isn't even a gym anywhere nearby. And so I know that not everybody can, but I really do want to be um, a voice to encourage women to get into the gym if you can. And if the reason why you are not is because you're intimidated or you're nervous, I want you to hear me even more loudly and clearly because in my experience and knowledge, being intimidated is not a good enough reason to keep you out of the gym. It is so valuable to your health. It is so important on so many levels for you to be doing this and to be strength training the best way that you can. And I don't want you avoiding the gym simply because it's a little scary or intimidating. Instead, what I want you to do is use my resources, use my episodes of Live with Holly, sign up for my free email updates, and start to educate yourself so that you can go into the gym and feel confident executing these exercises. And that is what I am all about providing you with the information, the tools, the resources, and the confidence to go into the gym because you are gonna, you, you deserve to be there and it is so incredibly powerful for your health. So one of those exercises is a lat 
pull down. So this is an exercise where you're sitting, you've got yourself anchored, there's a bar over your head and there's a cable and you're pulling down. So the resistance is happening from top down. You are pulling in a downward fashion where your lower body is anchored, okay? Now, those of you guys that are more experienced and more educated might say, well, isn't a pull-up the same exact thing? It's just the reverse of the direction, right? Instead of sitting and pulling down, you're here pulling yourself upward. It is the same exact movement pattern. However, for women, it's very different in the application and the execution. And so doing a proper pull-up 99.5 of the women in the entire world do not have sufficient strength and mechanics to do a pull-up in a way that it's actually productive and it's not going to lead to injury. There are women out there, but there aren't a whole lot of them. And that is one of the reasons why I really love a lat pull-down because you can do it effectively no matter what your fitness level is. And even if you're super fit, most women are underserved in their strength ability in the muscles that govern this movement pattern. The primary mover is your latissimus dorsi. It's the big, huge muscle sheath of your back that starts, the origin of it is deep down into your waist and then it inserts actually on your upper arm. And so that huge muscle governs this movement pattern. And the only way you can legitimately do it 100% effectively is by doing a lat pull down machine at the gym. And we could spend a whole live with Holly talking about why that is, but the best, most productive way for women to make progress in strengthening the latissimus dorsi and this movement pattern is a lat pull down, okay? So I worded that very specifically because I don't want someone to say, oh, well, isn't a XYZ basically the same? Sure, it might be kind of basically the same, but as I said, the most effective, the most way to productively strengthen your latissimus dorsi is to make sure you've got the right variability in weight load and gravity to really be able to do it properly. I could go on and on. I have such a love affair with lat pull down. On and on and on and on and on. I'll shut up for a minute because Cindy's telling me we have questions. Yes. Um, Fran um, said- Fran Bass? Yes. Hi! She said, I love the energy I get from strength training. She also I said, know. my jeans are fitting better and ha uh, from having a strength training program. Oh my God, I'm so excited! Um, and she's been in for what, a month maybe? A month. Fran has- Three weeks maybe? Like Fran, how long have you been in the comeback with us? Three weeks? A month already? I'm so excited. And my mom gave you googly eyes. Oh, googly eyes back. She always wants to join. Mom, I told you, you can't come onto the bed. <laughs> She, she wants to join. She wants to join. Oh like, my god, that's so cute. Do her camera we thing. should though. <laughs> Cindy's mom wants to join the feed. I keep telling her. Which I love. That's almost funny. My mom, stop. <laughs> anyway, um, healthy geeks. We're going to bring her on one of these days. I know. <laughs> healthy geeks are, um, I don't feel it on my back that much when I do like, pull the, for the pull down. Bingo, bingo. Hold on. Can you remember where we are? I want to talk about this. Okay? Uh -huh. Here's why. That's Kayla? Yeah. Everybody listen up. Kayla, um, healthy geekster today? Yeah. Healthy geekster today. She's also beauty geekster. I, I just figured that out for the first time fucking two years later. She's my language. Okay, Kayla. <laughs> Duh. Yeah. Sometimes I'm really a blonde. Um, she joined early October. Okay. So here's the deal. So Kayla just shared that when she does lat pull down, she doesn't feel it in her back muscles. Do you know why? You should know why, Missy. Well, at a point, is she going too heavy? That's possible. If she was going too heavy, what would be happening? And then another one is... Wait, wait, wait. Her... If she was going too heavy... She's pulling over bicep. Exactly. She's using her arms She's to perform it. She's using her arms. And yes. it could be the position that she has her arms It could be in. for sure. Yeah, so perfect. Okay, so here's the deal, guys. Most of us, because of what the latissimus dorsi do... Most of us are way weaker than we think we are. 
okay? So what happens is if you go in and you're not really clear on understanding what it feels like to pull from your back, if you don't have that skill yet, what's gonna happen is you're gonna take the weight load up and you're gonna pull with your muscles, uh, your arms, the muscles of your arms. And I see people doing this all the time. I see guys doing it, I see everybody doing it. And the forearms. And your forearms, all the muscles of your arms. So Kayla, most likely what's happening is you've got a weight load where you're pulling it with your arms. You're not pulling it with your back, okay? And so really, when you get your latissimus dorsi and your back muscles, strong enough and activating enough, you shouldn't feel it in your arms at all. You'll only feel it in your back. But for most women, that means taking that weight load down kind of low to get those lats firing so that you feel like you're pulling from your lats, okay? So for those of you guys that aren't totally clear on what the exercise is, imagine I'm sitting and I'm anchored and there's a straight bar above me on a cable and I am a huge fan of a reverse grip lat pull down like I featured in my book, Lift to Get Lean. There's a, there's a whole bunch of reasons for it. But when you grab the bar, okay, um, your hands are in a reverse position. They would be grabbing the bar like this, awesome. And your palms should be the width of your shoulders. Now, if you have wide shoulders like me, your hands should be wider. If you have narrow shoulders, your hands would be narrower. But when you grab that bar up here, you wanna look and make sure that your hands are directly above your shoulders. And so Kayla, it's possible that your hands are too wide or your hands are too narrow. Yay! Cindy cued this up for us. Can you see it okay? You can see it. Well, I'm shift it more down this way. There you go. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that is a lat pull down. A, start from the top. Okay, shoulders are anchored back and down, not up towards your ears. And then same thing when she pulls down, up towards your, like by your sternum almost, and then your shoulders are still anchored back and down. Yay, that is a lat pull down. Thank you so much for that. Mm -hmm. It's so handy to have published a book and to be able to use these things. Um, so therefore, Kayla, what I recommend is experiment with taking that weight load down and you really the beginning phase of a lat pull down movement happens in your back even before your elbows bend okay and so you want to be pulling and then the arms follow through because the back is doing the pulling okay and that's such a great question and that's a very common thing I see with a lot of women and men by the way because men all like to muscle through with their arms they muscle everything with their arms super super common but it's a really valuable critical important exercise and I'm so glad that you asked that question so just skipping back a moment ago to when Cindy's mom chimed in <laughs> and requested to come on screen with us I have a question for you guys I thought it would be kind of fun. What if we started inviting people on screen like that? People who have questions. Yeah. So like if Janet's watching, she can request to come on screen because you can do it in both places, yeah. I think, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So they can request to come on screen. Kayla, maybe you would want to do it. Um, anybody who would want to do it, I think it would be so fun for you guys to request to come on screen and we'll turn it into like almost like an interview process, That'd right? That'd be so cool. Wouldn't that be so fun? Yes. Think about that, guys. Kayla, would you be up for doing that? Or Janet, would you be up for doing that? Who else would be up for it? Who's with us here that, um, that would be up for it? I bet Deanna Ladaudio would do oh, it if she was here. Obviously my mom. Your mom would do it, yes, <laughs> if she has a question. I think your mom's just wanting to chime in and to say hi for I social so hour, too. though. <laughs> She just wants to be a part of the party, I know. right? Let me, let me open up my laptop for the questions. Um, but I'm curious, guys, because I thought that would be such a fun thing to start adding into Live with Holly here. So literally what you would do is you'd hit that button that says request. What's it say? Request uh, to come say, on. It just says request. Request to join the conversation or whatever. You would hit it, and then we would open it up, and you could ask me your question directly. I think that'd be so much fun. Um, question. Yes. Um, Natalie. Yes. Um, if lifting, Which my, Natalie, and then? if lifting my arms, mm -hmm. her left arm, is too hard at the moment, is there an alternative? Yes. So for this exercise that we're talking about specifically, the lat pull down, right? 
For those of you guys that have a limitation in this movement pattern, right, taking your arms up over your head, if you are currently limited in that movement pattern, I want you to work on it because I want you to eventually at some point down the road, rem are we okay? Yeah. I want you to remove that limitation if you can, okay? But yes, in the short term, for those of you guys, like Natalie maybe, that can't move their shoulders in that position, probably, I think I would say, the best and closest substitution would be, oh, that's a tough one. Because I would like a line dumbbell pullover, but you won't be able to go to here, so it's gonna have to be a bar bent over barbell row. You can do it, Natalie. Just do it, do a couple Here's what, here's what, actually, here's what I would say. No, no, because if she's got calcification in her shoulders. We're just bringing that up. What we could do though is this. So everybody listen up, go to YouTube, check out my Women's Strength Nation channel on YouTube. I have 200 video tutorials on there. I don't know. I have a lot of video tutorials on Women's Strength Nation on YouTube. Also click and follow me there or whatever you do. What do you do on YouTube? You follow. Subscribe. Subscribe. Subscribe to my channel on YouTube. So Natalie, do me a favor, go there to my YouTube channel and then when you get to the channel, search my channel videos for lying dumbbell pullover, okay? And I want you to look at that exercise. And what I want you to do is I want you to start doing that exercise. Home and strength nation, right? Women's Strength Nation on YouTube, mm -hmm. okay? Because the Holly Perkins channel on YouTube is different. Mm -hmm. The Women's Strength Nation channel on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Natalie, lying dumbbell pullover. Was that Move to Get Lean? Did I do that Move to Get Lean? Um, I don't think so. I'll check that. Look and see. I don't think I did, did I? I think that came after yeah, Move to Get Lean. Yeah. So anyway, watch that video tutorial. I want you to try that exercise with the three pound dumbbell. You could even do it with no dumbbell, okay? I want you to start to practice getting this range of motion opened up and doing it from a laying position. You might be able to get into it more easily than fighting gravity from an, a sitting upward position. If you're laying down, gravity is gonna be helping you. Oh yeah. I did do it. Oh, that's so exciting. Or you could also get my book, Live to Get Lean. That is a lying dumbbell pullover, okay? In this exercise, I'm probably doing it with a 10 pound dumbbell. Yeah. Okay, yeah? yeah. I'm do, probably doing it with a 10 pound dumbbell there. But for those of you guys that have shoulder issues or limitations, do it with a three pound dumbbell. And if that is still too challenging, Drop down and just do it with just your hands so that you can start to get that range of motion open. Because of, and then eventually you do it with like three pounds for a few months. Then you go to five pounds for a few months. Then you go to six pounds for a few months. Natalie, take your time and go slowly. But over time, you're gonna be able to open up that range of motion. And a lying dumbbell pullover is probably my favorite closest substitute that you could do for a lat pull down, okay? The other one that you could look at on my Women's Strength Nation YouTube channel is a bent over barbell row. It's just not quite as good. And Natalie, you would definitely be able to do. She said, she asked if she, she should do rowing. Yeah, bent over barbell row, you could do a cable row. That, I mean, it's not the same as a lat pull down because a lat pull down, your arms have to be above your head and pull down. Um, but it's close enough that you're gonna start to get some of the benefits until you are able to start practicing a proper lat pull down. Uh, Michelle walked into it a little yeah. earlier. Um, yes, um, weights for sure, traditional exercises. Have to say goblet squats are not my favorite because they are hard. Yeah. But definitely notice strength and ease in movements as I continue for, uh, for, for so persevering, right? Uh -huh. um, Janet, um, should we be able should we be able to do the same weight for wide grip pull downs no. as reverse grip? No. Because for some reason I can't. You can't. You won't be able to. Reverse is yes. easier. You'll have to go about 10 pounds lighter on a wide grip pull down. Yes, and that's normal. The reason for that is when we come into a wide grip pull down, okay, the dynamics of the shoulders and the arms change. So when you're here, you have less involvement in certain muscles and it's actually putting 
more direct load onto your lats, okay? Which in some ways sounds like a good thing. I'm all the way back. Is it going too far forward? What am I doing, sticking my chest out too much? No, you were just like this. Oh, I was doing this, because I do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so. Your shoulders. Yes, so when you're on a wide grip, it actually sounds like it would be more productive that here's the deal. When you're in a wide grip lat pull down, which I also love by the way, it's just different, um, you need to have really healthy rotator cuffs. The, the posterior aspect of your shoulders has to be really solid in order to maintain the progress of the other muscles on a wide grip pull down. So a wide grip lat pull down is a bit more biomechanically complicated than a reverse grip. And so most women are able to make progress better on a reverse grip pull down. Also, you guys should know that when you do a wide grip lat pull down, you're strengthening your back muscles in a wide fashion. And so you know sometimes how we get like bra overhang here where we have a little bit of body fat that kind of spills over the bra. That area, those muscles can get built up more from a lat pull down. Some of you might love that, some of you might hate that. I personally hate it unless I'm really lean because I've already got super wide shoulders. So when I build out my back in a wide fashion, if I'm not lean, I don't like, I just look fatty here. And I store, I hold a little bit of fat here. And I just don't personally like it. And so I like to have my back a little bit narrower. And I like to minimize that bra strap overflow. And if you, you know, if you're like me, if you're a little uncomfortable with that bra strap overflow, you're better off doing a reverse grip lat pull down. Because a wide grip, builds the muscles out in a wide fashion, and that's just gonna push that body fat outward a little bit. If you're okay with that, awesome. You should be okay with it. I should be okay with it. Um, and like I said, as soon as I get lean enough that I'm, I don't care about the bra overhang, and when my shoulders are feeling like they need a lat pull down, I'll do wide grip lat pull downs for my shoulders and for all of that. So I interchange between the two based on where I am. I hope that wasn't too complicated. No. And then uh, last question here before I shut it down Already? Instagram. What? So we're gonna keep going here okay. because we keep this shorter. Remember? Yeah, okay, yes. Um, chunky hands with, with the wide grip. Yes. Will the wide grip work my lats more? Yes, it does. It, provided your posterior deltoids and your rotator cuff are up to par. If your posterior shoulder stabilizer muscles are not up to par, you're gonna end up getting biomechanical imbalances. But technically, yes, you're gonna hit your lats, your latissimus dorsi a bit more on a wide grip pull down. And if you're a man, go for it, because men, generally can muscle through that a little bit better because of their arms, their posterior deltoids tend to be a little bit stronger. Um, it really is just taxing on the posterior shoulder stabilizers. I think she's, she's, I think she's a woman. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, so um, we're gonna be losing you guys on Instagram in a moment, but just know, come visit me on Facebook, Holly Perkins Fitness on Facebook. All of these episodes of Live with Holly live forever on my Facebook page. So if you like this, if you like my conversation, if you have questions, please visit me on Facebook. Go to Holly Perkins Fitness on Facebook. Go to the videos tab and then go to the Live with Holly playlist. And we now have tons of episodes of incredible content there. Bye, guys. Bye, Instagram. Facebook. Was that how many minutes on Instagram? Uh, 53. 53. So we could have gone a little bit longer. Uh -huh. I've already tried. All right, okay, fine. I've You're the boss. Tried. Cindy's the boss around here. Did you guys know that? Yeah, guys. You guys think she's the boss? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think I'm the boss, but it's um, Vicky, not Hope, true. Vicky Hope Nash says, um, "Love line dumbbell pullovers. One of my favorites. 
Um, and then Kristen Marie. Hi. Um, kind of a side question. Yeah. Do you think doing a lying dumbbell pullover is better with a dumbbell than doing the version on a machine? I know. I don't know that I've ever seen a machine. Is she talking about oh, a pull, or, lat pull down? Do you, no, no, do you no, think no. She's, she's talking about lying dumbbell pullover with a dumbbell than doing it the version on a machine, I think. Do you think maybe she means as compared to a lat pull down? Oh, no, 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 no. I think she's asking, like, you know how people do it sometimes with, like, like a cable, a machine. cable machine or something? I can't read the rest of the comment. Maybe I would can... say for, for that, that lying lat pullover, let's call it. I really like that movement with a dumbbell because of the way gravity works around your body. That being said, sure, you could do a machine or a, me a mechanism where the weight would be over your head. Um, it's just not quite the same and here's why. When you use a dumbbell and you come into this position, you're now, okay, Strength training is working around gravity, okay? When you're, when you're lying on a bench, when, you're, when you have those strappy things, when you're, when you're, when you're pulling, pulling down, right, okay. So basically, imagine this. Imagine that you're laying on a bench. Can you pull that up a front lift to get lean again? Lying dumbbell pull over by any mm -hmm. chance? It'll be easier if I have a picture. Mm -hmm. So imagine you're laying, lying, laying, lying on a bench, lying. okay? And we have the choice between doing it with a barbell, uh, sorry, a dumbbell, or a band or a cable, which would be parallel to your body over your head, okay? So here's the deal. When you do this exercise, okay, can they see it? Yeah, there, no, higher, higher, there. Okay, so right here in this position, okay, the dumbbell, its relationship to gravity is such that there's a downward force of energy that downward gravitational force is loading your arms and your muscles in a particular way. Now imagine if the resistance was over here on a cable and you were pulling this way from a cable, you're gonna lose this downward relationship of gravity, okay? So you're pulling from here. So you'll get this downward, okay? relation uh, related to your body's downward, you're gonna get that, but you're not gonna get this downward pull. And so it's this that I find is so effective, specifically for your triceps and for this aspect of your lats, okay? And if you had a cable machine or bands that you were pulling like this from, you're gonna lose some of that. And so therefore, while the two are really similar, doing it with a dumbbell is probably 10% more effective. Maybe it's 20% more effective. So the way the human body works on that exercise, I just think a dumbbell is more productive to the way that the human body works. And that doesn't apply for all exercises because like lat pull down, is more productive on a cable machine. It depends on what movement pattern we're talking about, okay? Um, for example, another example of that would be the first exercise we talked about today was goblet squat. And I used the reference, the closest thing to a goblet squat could be maybe a leg press, but there's a big difference there. Even though it's the same movement pattern, it's completely different because with, with goblet squat, you're working against gravity. Whereas when you're in a leg press, your upper body is locked off, your back is locked off. Whereas on a goblet squat, your core is relational to gravity. And so, so every exercise is a little bit different, but specifically when we're talking about lat pull down and dumbbell pullover, I do like it with a dumbbell. Um, she said, completely understand, thanks so much. Okay, good. Third exercise that we're just getting to now at the end, because I said I was gonna give you three exercises, is a flat chest press. So chest press is also one of those exercises that I think is just so valuable for your overall mechanics and for the general upper body pushing for women. There's so many different ways that you can do a chest press. You can do it with a barbell, you can do it with dumbbells, you can do it with a band. Technically, you could do push-ups. I'm not a huge fan of push-ups for all of the reasons that I've talked about earlier today. It's just your relationship to gravity is different. For chest press, I'm really a big fan of a traditional barbell bench press 
for women when we're talking about building strength and function. When we talk about aesthetics and making this area of the body look nice, I'm less of a fan of chest press, but today what we're talking about is getting you optimally strong, functioning, healthy, all of that, and for that, I'm a huge fan of a traditional barbell bench press. If you want to see an example of that, go to the Women's Strength Nation channel on YouTube, and from within that channel, search the video videos for barbell bench press, right? I think it's a barbell bench press on there. Hello. Could be a chest press. No, it's a barbell bench it press. Barbell. Look at bench press on my channel, and that's going to show you a video tutorial. It is, it's barbell. It's barbell, barbell bench press, and barbell. then it's like Olympic barbell bench press, right? And there's, ooh, let me look it up real quick. Yeah, I think I'm pretty sure it's bench press Olympic bar, and then just plain old bench press. I think so. That's what it is. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, guys, check those out because those are my three exercises. And again, reminder: do make sure that you go check out the blog because there's like two more exercises that you can add to these three. And if you put them all together, you've got a really incredible, comprehensive workout, which by the way, this these movements mimic exactly what I was talking about on my Instagram story earlier today. Today's um, featured article on Livestrong.com is an article by moi where I talk about five exercises that women need and these are kind of really quite similar to the five exercises that were featured in that story. And that's because these five exercises are so powerful, so helpful for women. So that is it today, guys. Thank you for being here. I hope you'll be here next week. Make sure you sign up for my free email updates. You can just click the button up that says sign up and that's gonna put you on my free email updates. What that's gonna do for you is every Tuesday, you're gonna get an email update from me and it's gonna give you even more tips, tools, and resources in the exclusive content section, which gives you exclusive content that I don't talk about here. And so it's content and information that I reserve specifically for the members of my community because I wanna make sure I give you guys extra good info. Bench press. Bench press. <laughs> And then there's one that says Bench, bench press, press Olympic, Olympic bar. bar. Okay, yeah. So on the Women's Strength Nation channel on YouTube, search Bench Press. Awesome, guys. I'll see you next week. Bye. So much love.